I can very easily remember the first year that I saw the Jesus puppet. For those of you who are guests among us this morning, this must be our eighth or ninth year. But I remember the very first year and the very first time that I saw the puppet. I was going over my Palm Sunday sermon in my office and I heard a loud commotion on Channing Way just outside my window. Looking out, I saw this huge puppet walking up the street with a bunch of people around it and they were laughing and singing and having a great time. As the puppet went by my window, our eyes met. I swear to you. <laughs> he even lifted a huge hand and waved at me. What I remember most from that Sunday is what I remember every year when we take him out. I will never forget the look in the puppet's eyes. And I always have to think, how strange a paper mache puppet conveying human emotion, but it is all there in that face. Compassion, loneliness, a sense of knowing, and somehow at the core, silence. The Jesus puppet is larger than life. He's about eight or nine feet tall. And I think that sometimes we use puppets in our lives and in theater to remind us that the events of every day sometimes are larger than life. That's why we use puppets, to remind us that some things are larger than life. And so the Jesus puppet reminds us that the events of this day and the events of the coming week, the week that we are entering this morning, are also larger than life. Encapsulating the big themes of our lives today, celebration, to come, sorrow and despair, today, joy, to come, grief and loss, today, friendship, <coughs> later on, betrayal. Today, loyalty and excitement. Later on, abandonment. And of course, life and death. On this Palm Sunday, we remember that this is the first day of the week. We will remember next week, the first day of the week. And this week, the one that we are entering is a powerful week, a week of life-changing death-embracing events. It will be a week that changes every single life it touches and also will change the course of human history in the life of the world. In a real sense, I believe that Palm Sunday is a gateway to the events of Holy Week. It is an opening more than it is a moment that stands alone it is a statement of what will come, proclaiming always the joy of Easter after the events of Holy Week. But I am already getting ahead of myself. Mark's story of the last week of Jesus' life is plainly told. Of all the Gospel writers, he is, for me, one of those newspaper kind of guys, just the facts, ma'am, just the facts. His writing is terse and fluid, and his storytelling is without unnecessary embellishment. The famous preacher Fred Craddock writes that the Jesus of Mark is acted upon rather than acting himself, and that he is largely silent in the story as others play out the high drama of their lives surrounding him. As we enter now into the events of Holy Week, we understand the truth of his observation. We see and we read of the utter failure of the disciples as they fall asleep and cannot wait with him. Peter denies him not once but three times, and Judas betrays him with a kiss. Pilate condemns an innocent man, and the cross is erected. In Mark, Jesus does not speak triumphantly. 
as he does in the Gospel of John, hanging on the cross, he cries, it is finished. And in Mark, he does not offer the path of forgiveness that he does in Luke. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The Jesus we see in Mark is in the midst of the action and activity of the scene, but he is not swallowed up by it. The Jesus we see in Mark moves in and through the events of his life with a depth of awareness and a self-consciousness about each activity he is in. He emerges in this week as a solitary figure, much like our Jesus puppet this morning, alone and silent, standing in the midst of life with his own truth. Yesterday, members of our congregation took a silent retreat with each other to get ready for this holy week. As we entered into our time together, several on the retreat had not been to a silent retreat before, and some spoke of the fear of quiet. It's not the way in our world, is it? As they entered into the quiet and into the calm of that time, and then came out again to share together, several commented that silence can be full as it stops the chatter of the world around us. In the silence, we see the drops of water on the trees after the rain. We hear the creek gurgle through the woods, and we notice the strong beat of our hearts that sometimes we fail to listen to in the chatter and clang of the world. In the midst, of all that he faced in the coming week before his death, I imagine that somewhere Jesus knew and embraced and understood silence. I imagine that he was full of God in that moment and full of God's love for him as he walked the lonely road before his death. And I imagine that for Jesus, God was present in his silence as holy love and unchanging hope. Perhaps the noisy parade of Palm Sunday opens the way to the silence which lives at the center of the week to come. In the silence of Jesus, we seek the presence of God who loves him and certainly loves us without never letting us go. As we enter into this week, each place that you are, each observation that you make, listen for the silence at the center of the story. If you are riding on BART, or driving in your car to work, or having a moment between breakfast and going into the day, stop, feel, Listen for the silence, and in that silence, let God, who lives in Jesus, come to you and be with you in the midst of the story of your life and his story. And as we enter into this week, let us remember that that silence is pointing us in the direction of God in the direction of God's love for all humanity, and in the direction of God's willingness to forgive and to send us on the way. Stop, listen, embrace the holy silence of Holy Week. Amen.